Hello crafty friends! My name's Alicia, but you can call me Crafty Owl. And welcome, or perhaps welcome back, to my channel. Today's video is part of the August 2024 Oh So Inspired Collaboration Hop. This is a collaboration that I host each month here on YouTube, where the collaboration team and myself take inspiration from the same creation and make something new based upon it. This may be the layout, the color palette, the theme. As you hop along today, you're gonna see a wide variety of projects that was inspired by that same inspiration piece. And speaking of inspiration piece, this month we were inspired by the card you see on screen now. It was created by Lorraine Sish, who is at Stamp with Lorraine over on Instagram. Down in the description box below, I will have a link to this card as well as her Instagram account so you can go check out her other creations and leave her some love. To see what everybody on the team created, you're going to click on the playlist link down in the description box or on the channel link list. Me personally, I think it's easiest to click on that playlist link and then you can just sit and watch as all the videos play one right after the other. I will have that playlist link also as an end card at the end of this video, so when you're done watching my video, you can go see what everyone else created. I know that they would all love for you to watch their videos, give them a thumbs up, and leave them some love in their comment section. What I'm taking from today's inspiration piece are the various colored strips and then the die cut on top of them. And something fun I did is let my channel members help me decide on today's color palette. I used random.org and I chose three numbers between 1 and 250. That's because color cube box number one has 250 cards. Now, if you don't know what color cubes are, these are boxes of cards with photos that give you a color palette. And then on the back, they give you some different shades of those. I love to use these. I use them very frequently. In fact, I'll put my color cube playlist link in the description box below. Because as I say many times, if it isn't like your normal color rainbow, I have a hard time putting colors together. So this helps me. The randomly chosen numbers were 13, 72, and 146. All of them are pretty much fall color palettes, which is appropriate with the new season that's coming up. And my channel members chose, let me know your guess down in that comment section, they chose lucky number 13. So today I will be using this along with some cardstock scraps. As I get into the process, I'll let you know about other products and tools that I use. But as always, if I ever leave you with any questions, feel free to leave those in that comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty. When I use a color cube card for a project, the first thing I do is bring in my cardstock swatch ring and try to match up the colors I have with the colors on the color cube card just as close as possible. Now I do get a lot of questions on this ring. Each time I get a new cardstock from Tailored Expressions, I use a tag die I own to cut out a little swatch or a little tag from it. I keep the ring in Roy G. Biv or rainbow color order, and when it's on my shelf, I store them in alphabetical order. I have found out that this really works for me. The colors I ended up choosing were Dijon, pumpkin, cherry pop, and jalapeno, and I just brought in a scrap of each. Now the card does have five colors, but I thought the last two were pretty close, so I'm just going to use this single green. Now for my card base and to put my little strips on too, I did also bring in a piece of toffee cardstock as a neutral. At this point, you could definitely use a trimmer to cut your strips from just varying the widths. But for me, I'm gonna be using Tailored Expressions Easy Strip Stitch Dies. I own the 1 8 1 quarter, and 1 half inch width dies. And since I only have three die sets and four colors of cardstock, I will be using one of the die sets twice. 
While I was off camera using those dies, I also cut a piece of toffee to four and a quarter by five and a half to put my strips on to. Then it, this part probably took the longest of all. I kind of figured out the color order I wanted to go and the arrangement. I did vary the color, the width of the strips, and how far that they went into the piece of toffee cardstock. And once I kind of had a pattern figured out, which I went green, yellow, orange, and then I put a red strip every third strip, I then brought in my Barely Art liquid glue to start adhering these down. All I did was add some to the back, and then I started placing down the strips. I was trying to be very mindful of how much space was between each one to keep those consistent. I'll show you here how I did a few of those, but most of it I did do off camera. Here's a look at all of those strips in place. I think it makes a pretty fun card just like it is. I did let this dry for about five minutes and then to cut it down I brought in Tailored Expressions stitched rectangle stacklets and using the largest one I'm going to cut down my strippy panel. I also grabbed a piece of buttercream frosting cardstock which just is a little bit off white and I'm going to cut a piece for the inside of my card to write the personal message. While I was off camera, I prepped a top fold toffee card base and now I'm going to add the buttercream frosting piece to the inside and the scrappy strip piece to the front, both with just ATG to keep everything nice and flat so far. I did try to get a nice even border all the way around and on the front where it's the toffee on toffee, I do like that effect how there is some color bleeding off some of the edges, but then you also have the toffee and the stitching right next to each other. For my focal point, I will be die cutting the largest flower from Tailored Expressions Cone Flower die set. And for my sentiment, I brought in the Spellbinders A Little Hello Sentiments. It does have a coordinating stamp set, but I will just be using the Hello die and the first shadow. I brought back in some of the color cardstock scraps from cutting the strips. And for the Hello, I'm going to be using a scrap of red and a scrap of toffee. Once all of the pieces were die cut, it was time to start assembly. For this, I am using the Barely Art liquid glue, so I have some wiggle time to move stuff around where I need it. And then to help get the hello centered right on top of its shadow, I used a pair of tweezers while I added glue and started to get it placed onto its toffee shadow. To help everything dry firmly together, I added a stamp block on the top and let this sit for about five minutes. After that had dried, I added some foam tape strips to the top of the cone flower. I am going to adhere the stem down flat because I will have the hello die popped up right on top of it. I played a little bit with the arrangement and then once I liked it, I started adhering everything down. I did try to keep it where I was going to keep the stem in place while I pulled off the foam tape, but that didn't work. So I did kind of have to refigure out the layout before I put my flower in place and added some glue to the stem. Once that was down, I pulled the release paper from the Hello die and got that put in place. But you'll see here that I did go ahead and add some Barely Art liquid glue to the top of the foam just once again so I have some wiggle time while placing that down um, before I get it in a place I don't want it and then it's hard to pull back up. To finish the card off, I brought in some gold matte enamel dots from Tailored Expressions and I put six total on the card front. I put a larger one and a smaller one next to each other in three different places. I thought that the matte gold went well with kind of the fall feel of this card. And here are some close-up looks at the finished piece. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I was inspired to create today's card. If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Don't forget to visit the inspiration piece linked below and to click on the playlist at the end of this video to see what all of the other artists created. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. 
I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you are interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box below.